hello everyone so welcome to another video uh, today we are going to discuss a uh, lit code daily problem lexicographically smallest equivalent string so um, the problem statement states that there will be given two strings s1 and s2 and based on that we will be creating a map then we are given a, sec a third string which is base string and we need to uh, map the uh, lexicographically smallest equivalent string of the base string so uh, w when we go to the visualization we can see from here I've uh, written some things and I'll discuss it with you and gradually I will uh, show you which problem type this falls into and we will understand it uh, carefully okay so uh, the given statement is s1 and s2 are given they will have equal length their length will be same and uh, the base strings length doesn't matter we can uh, check that later now first what we can do from this as the problem statement states that we will be mapping s1 and s2 so here you can see that s1 is the string Parker okay and s2 has the string Morris now we somehow need to map them okay and map them with uh, not with P with them but they can be uh, mapped in both sides sides okay so um, then after this mapping is complete we need to find uh, what will be for the string parser now um, the first thing I need you to understand is that this is a string based problem and we can see that uh, it only consists of lowercase strings and we are mapping a character with another character right this thing is clear right okay so um, as we are mapping one character with another character can we think it like this uh, that uh, we have the set of characters where we have written 26 characters a b c d e i have i haven't sh shown some characters which are unrelated to this example so uh, these are the characters uh, that are related with this example and i've only written them we first need to map s1 s2 now first after iterating we are iterating uh, from i equals 0 to n both of them has same same length so when I'm in I equal 0 what characters I get I get P from S1 and I get M from S2 now we need to map them so uh, we can see from here that the, here's P and here's M now how we can map them the problem statement states that we need to find the lexicographically smallest so when we are checking uh, among p and m how we can map them we can actually move this p we can actually move this p and move it here p point to m okay so whenever we call for p we get m because m is lexicographically smaller than p then we increment our i we are checking from for a and o now which one is lexicographically smaller a obviously so we will move this move this uh, to a and we will connect them when when we call o we will return a okay now after that we increase i so our i is now 2 and from here we get r from s1 we get r and from s2 we get r so there's no thing to uh, worry okay Th they are the same next we go to uh, i equal 3 and we get from s1 is k and we get from s2 is r so now we need to map them so how we can map them uh, yeah so k is lexicography smaller and r is after that so we will get r and move it here and we will connect them we will connect them this way okay now uh, after that we um, 
increase i i2 now i2 now 4 so for s1 we get um we get e and from s2 we get i so let's map them together so this is e yep okay so this is e e is mapping with r is mapping with e so i is mapping with e okay so this one's done and lastly when we increase i to 5 i to 5 we get from s1 r and from s2 is s so let's get okay this one this one will map to which one this one will map to r now um suppose we have uh, moved so from here you can see that we have actually moved our uh, problem to a graph problem okay reduced our problem with through a gra graph problem now um we actually want to let me just uh, clear the things so finally our problem is reduced to this, this graph problem okay so um what will happen what is the we can see that we have mapped every character with its uh, mapping of smallest character which is lexicographically smallest now for s we have mapped that s ma is mapped with r but can we can you see that uh, when s is mapped to with r let me just uh, move it uh, move this to left okay so when s is mapped to r when we call for s character s we return r but the lexicographically lowest is k so we should return k so s should actually point to the parent parent node which is k right so let me just draw so when s is pointing to r it should point to the parent everyone should link to the parent and parent is the lowest parent is the lowest common ancestor among them okay which one is the parent pa the parent which has the lowest character count character i mean uh, in the index of characters so if you have studied union find problem uh, i have discussed union find problem in my previous videos you can go and check out what's union find problem and you can actually relate this problem with the union find problem and this is basically when you understand the union find problem and you go to reduce this problem to union find you will understand how is easy it is to actually uh, modify it to union find okay so um i I'll, i'm leaving this to this statement that uh, it can be reduced to union find now how can we implement this in union find okay so should I show you the code or I can uh, just discuss it here then I, I can show you the code. So as if from the start you saw that we have each character right we had 26 characters. So for each character we will keep an array of parent or unions I'll name it union okay we'll keep an array of union and each array will uh, contain uh, let me just write it in white one two three these are the index of the array and actually these are actually the position of the characters a b c d e f g right now when we first construct the array we will point every node with itself every node will point itself every node's parent will be itself right then we can see from this graph that 0 0 which is 0 so what is the uh, let me uh, let us just describe uh, for i it's closer to yep so 7 8 9 10 11 12 so g h i j so we can see that i has 8 right now uh, from here uh, we can see that e has uh, count e has index 4 and i has index 8 so uh, our actually when we uh, actually uh, re resolve in this uh, graph we get that uh, the this index will have when we call for index 8 it will actually map to index 4 okay so when we call union index 8 
for the uh, character i it will actually uh, return us uh, 4 so this means its parent is this e this 4 index right so this way we can actually uh, find the mapping of those strings and then we can actually modify is it to this output string so let me show you how we can modify this to the output string so we have p so now we are discussing for parser this output string we will map it based on uh, this graph this graph we have so for p we have what is the parent of pm so we will just write it m okay then for a what is the parent of a a is the parent of a so we will just write a then we see for r what is the parent of r k k now we see for s what is the parent of s k because this is the lowest and they are mapped with the parent so we get k then what is the parent of e e itself and for r it is k so we get this output string right this is the output we want and this is the output that's written in the first examples output right so this is uh, this is a very clear and very easy we can it we can illustrate the same thing for the second example and also for the third example so um, as uh, I, I will not uh, waste any t other time by coding the solution I will just discuss it after copy pasting it so here's the here's the code we have first uh, created an union array we have used int as we already know it will be the, uh, the English uh, in English uh, lowercase letters contain 26 characters so it will have 26 uh, length and each character is mapped to at first each character maps to its parent itself then we iterate for every uh, length that s1 and s2 will have same length and then we have the character from each of those strings then we find the parent of those characters we actually find the parents uh, as you can see from here that uh, we actually found uh, the parent we for r we found its parent k for s we found its parent at first it was pointing to itself s was pointing to itself when we tried to resolve r and parent was k so r was pointing to k and s was previously pointing to itself so uh, the find parent find parent function for r will return will return k and find parent function for s will return itself s then when we have the parent of both of them we will first see which parent is lower which parent is lower and the lower parent will actually the will be the parent of the bigger one so we can see that k is the lower so the parent of parent of s will now be k so s will now point to k right so s will now point to k let me just draw it so s will now point to k right so this is how we are doing here this is what we are doing here and actually find parent is a lookup that's looking for the parent and that's done that's how we map then we are using string builder string builder if you don't know the difference of string builder string buffer and string you can uh, search in the YouTube string builders are very efficient when we are actually concatenating strings uh, in n number of time okay so for each each character in this uh, out uh, base string we find its parent then actually parent is a int which is which actually gives us the position so we so we need to find the actual character so we actually summation add it with a character a and then find the actual character and then we append it and then we return the two string uh, version of uh, string builder right so if we discuss the find parent uh, function we can see that when it's returning when it's given a character we actually first check the uh, parent of the character then we actually check if it is pointing if the parent of the character is itself right if the parent of the character is itself if it is pointing to itself uh, we will not iterate the loop if it is not pointing to itself we will 
uh, just return the parent we have found the parent and we will return it okay right so if I discuss this uh, when we are actually iterating when we are actually iterating R then its parent is K so when we look for the union of R of R actually it will be an integer it will actually return K okay then we will actually look for union of K so what will union of K return it will return K right it the parent will point to itself so then we will actually break the loop and return what return the K return the parent equal K right because we have found K as the parent right so I think uh, the problem is clear for you guys and I think it was helpful okay so that's it for today thank you